This is Zachary M. Hembry. You're watching Good Company with Scott Bowen. Hey guys, my name is Scott Bowling and you're watching Good Company. Today we have the man, Mr. Zach Hembry. Thank you for being on the show, brother. Thanks for having me, pal. Man, I love this new uh, record you guys have. How long does it take to get a record done? I mean, that's... Well, that all depends, man. Not, not I mean, recording-wise, just this physical copy. Like, <laughs> I that mean, one took it, a while. Is it, yeah. it, it's pretty cool to have your own yeah. record, right? Oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, and this one's green. It's awesome, man. I've got to frame it. Yes, yeah, not green. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I always think that's really cool, man. Yes. Anyway, it took about six months for that one to get out. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is this your guy's first record? This is our first record. It's been out. It took about six months for it to be released mm -hmm. upon uh, pressing, but uh, it's been out for almost a year now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Who's in the band? <clears throat> this is uh, Charlie Felito. He plays bass and does backing vocals. That's Parker Bradshaw. He plays drums. That's my beautiful self. Yeah. You know, you know what I do. I know, man. Um, that's Ash. <laughs> Matiliades, he plays guitar and does backing vocals. And not pictured here is our, our newest member, Kay, um, a.k.a. Casey DC. She joined about a year ago. Yes, man. Wait, she should be somewhere in here, but she's... You're pointing to her. She's, she's some, up there. Yeah, she's like holding the light or that's something. Yeah. The, the new people have to do that kind of stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, where was this picture taken at, by the way? That's right across the street from Mule Camp Tavern. Oh, cool, yeah. man. So does everybody live in close to you? Um, no, I live in Flowery Branch, and a couple of the guys live in Athens, and a couple live in Atlanta. Do you guys get together like once a week? Once or? a week. Oh, do you? Yeah, in Athens. Oh, usually. in Athens. We practice at a um, an auto auction out in a right right before Bogart turns into Athens. Oh, okay. Yeah. I miss those days, man. I grew up in bands too, and I remember like just sweating it out to be like four or five hour practices. That's the way it is with us now. But you know, so, we were talking about Leonard Skinner and they, like they practiced and there was like no yeah, AC. They, they practiced just, in what they called the Hill House. Yes, right? yeah. 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 You guys probably don't do that, right? We don't do that, but they <laughs> they, 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 they they would have a guy sleep there every night. A different guy take Why? a shift to sleep there to make sure no one would steal their gear. And oh, had no really? AC and the hell and they had rattlesnakes and stuff. And Man, that's yeah. crazy, dude. Yeah, I love Skinner, man. Yeah. It, what, Skinner, man. Did, you, did, you, did your dad listen to him? Or my he dad just... didn't like rock music at all. Uh, my dad liked only gospel music, and my my grandparents didn't like rock music either. They liked only country and gospel. So, so, so when Skinner you... was considered evil to my dad. Really? Yeah. So that made you want to listen to it more, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Did you have to hide it from him and stuff? Oh, yeah. I had to hide everything from him. If not, he'd end up in a trash can. Oh, yeah? yeah. Did he ever find it, any of the stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, man, that's so cool. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Lots of my albums over the years got ended, ended up burned or in the trash or, you know, oh, wow. broken in half in front of me and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And you said your brother like listened to Black Sabbath, but did he liked Ozzy. You know, but that was only that was only through me. He would hear, he would hear the stuff I was playing. And that was what he would pick to listen to. You know, <laughs> Ozzy, I like the way he sings. Oh uh, yeah. You know, it wasn't can he wasn't going to pick Cannibal Corpse or Pantera. You know. Yeah. You know? Um, growing up, man, did you have like uh, friends that listen to all this, or were you just kind of a not really, lower? not really? Yeah, I had I had some friends that were into like heavier music, but it was only no one was a lifer the way I am, you know. Yeah. Like I had friends that were into corn and Limp Biscuit and Slipknot and stuff, but looking back, you can definitely tell it was just that was just a passing thing for them. Yeah, you know. Uh, what's cool, man, uh, is uh, you are married now and have a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. So how did you uh, how did you and your wife meet and all that stuff? Well, that's like a Leonard Skinner story of his own. Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I met, uh, I was in a band called Grim Piggins in the Bastard Congregation. And uh, <laughs> it's not too dissimilar to what I'm doing now. It's, it was a little more on the Southern Rock side yeah. than what I'm doing now. But um, her current husband was a member of the band. And my wife and I met each other in that band and fell in love with each other. Mm. Well, she was still married to my bandmate. Huh? Oh. Yeah. Well, you guys. It wasn't a fleeting good. thing. We ended up getting married and yeah. starting a family. It wasn't like you know. Yeah. We just fell in love. You know? Sorry, man. I didn't mean to rig all that up. <laughs> nah, that's fine. It's ancient history. Yeah. Everyone involved is, to my knowledge, is healed. And and you know, your wife's a Danzig fan, so my wife's yeah. a Danzig. She fanatic. cried at the show. She cried at the show. Yeah. That's pretty epic. Yeah. I was like, man, you couldn't imagine my He's wife winking at her and stuff. That really? Yeah. My wife would be crying <laughs> because she'd want to go. <laughs> like, be like, let's go. She'd want to leave. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, that was, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. Dude, this this is uh, I was trying to like when I listen to this, I'm trying to like, who do you sound like? And you don't really sound like anybody, but uh, I kind of get this like Gigi Allen kind of vibe, like this cool. I really like it though, man. Uh, who are your influences? 
Well, Gigi Allen definitely is an influence, but I, I uh, not not necessarily in a musicality sense. I do appreciate a lot of Gigi Allen's music, mm -hmm. and I am a fan. I even have it tattooed on. Oh, screen, do you? But I, uh, yeah, I, I would say there's more Leonard Skinner in, involved in what I do than Gigi Allen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's good, dude. Um, you got how many songs you got under ten? And you have a video too, which I was playing for a minute ago. But uh, where'd you guys record your video at? Recorded in uh, <clears throat> Raleigh, North Carolina, at the uh, at the Rusty Knuckles compound. And Rusty Knuckles is the record label that we are signed to currently. Mm -hmm. And um, the record label owner uh, um, recorded it. And we also have uh, the cameo of the guy that the video was showing. But um, the guy that's killing me in the video, his name is Jeff Clayton. <laughs> and um, he's the singer in my favorite band, Annie Scene. And I've never heard of him. I got to check it out. North Carolina, North Carolina redneck punk rock. <laughs> They're like the redneck Ramones or the... You know, uh, oh, that's cool! Punk rock, Leonard Skinner, or something like that. How do you, you know? get? How do you come up with the, this concept of the video of you being killed? Like, uh, is this I've your had, idea? I've had that idea for years, man, and I always wanted to have an idea of a video for that. And when I finally, finally got signed to that label. We finally were able to make it happen. I've been wanting to be on that label for about ten years. And how did you get on the label? I just sent him the demos, and the next day he's like, "Let's fucking do this." Oh, that's yeah. cool, man. And have you always like you, you sing, but you play other instruments. I've seen you play with Dynamite Eighty Five, and you were playing bass, filling in for those guys. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Do you play what, what, what instruments do you play? I mainly play guitar, but I play bass too. And I write the majority of the music for uh, the Satan Sisters at home by myself. It's interesting. Most mm. of the songs don't start off as heavy rock songs; they start off as kind of like country southern rock songs. Because I'm just sitting at home. On my acoustic, yeah, out that's that interesting, way. dude. Yeah. You should release some of that. Like, Wait, just, that's the plan. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. man. Do you so do you write the music first and the lyrics, or both at the same time? It's it's it changes. It's yeah. different every time, you know. Which uh, yeah, that's most I, most of the time. More often than not, when I pick up a guitar, I'll, I'll start strumming, and then a couple lines will just naturally come to me, and then it's off to the races, as they say. Okay, that's cool, man. Uh, so, like, growing up, man, what what bands influenced you when you were younger? As far as like as a child or as a teenager or just well okay whatever. as a well, as a child man when I was a kid like, like it was like Pantera and stuff and it was you know those guys are way older than me so it's it like we were talking earlier about like like Far Beyond Driven was like the record that changed me was there an album like that that changed you that you're like what is this I've never heard anything like this there's there are, there are many of those but I I, I would have to say. Probably at five years old, discovering Charlie Daniels' band, a decade of hits, is what sealed the deal for me that I wanted to be a musician. Mm. You know? that's, that's not a typical answer, I know. No, that's you know? good. Um, when, you, when you heard it, were you like, I want to do this, I want to play an instrument, or I got to... I wanted to be a front man. You know? did, I wanted yeah. to be like a, you know, a rock and roll front man. Oh, that's cool. I did, it took years before I actually ended up doing that in the band. I went to playing bass and playing lead guitar. And Was bass your first uh, instrument? Guitar was. Guitar was, that's yeah. nice. Were your parents like into music growing up? Oh yeah, my dad was a southern gospel singer. Was he? Yeah. So he played around. at church and stuff? or yeah, a yeah, so did I, yeah. We did it together. Oh really? Yeah. You played guitar for him? No, I sang with him. Wow. We had a, a gospel group when I was a little kid called Saved by Grace. And it was myself, my dad, and my, one of my younger brothers. Really? How many brothers you got? I have two brothers. Were they all in the band? No, just one of them. Oh, that's cool. How long did you guys tour on that? We would just play like the circuits. My dad also, with, with being a Southern Gospel singer, he was a Southern Gospel concert promoter. Mm. And so he would book these bigger shows and like the rock stars of gospel music. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with these people, but like Laverne and Shirley Tripp or Wendy Bagwell and Sunlighters. They're like these huge upper end gospel singers. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad would book those guys at the local high school or assembly hall or wherever. And he would have us come out and open up, you know. Oh, like that. that's like cool. Years old, like, oh, look at a little kid. That kind of thing. Is there any footage of that? There's none. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God there's none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so like in high school, were you in bands growing up? I was up? in bands in high school, yeah. Yeah, you always singing? No, playing guitar mainly. When did you realize you wanted to be a, like you could sing? Do the, the Well, always, always sing. And even even when I, um, in bands that I just played guitar or bass in, I would still write a lot of the vocal parts and stuff like that or write yeah. the lyrics and stuff, you know. But I guess it was just a natural, slow progression of just finding music naturally, you know. Like, yeah. as I was telling you earlier, I found that abandoned car when I was like 13 years old. This is the best story ever. Like, two miles from my house, I found an abandoned car and inside of it was a CD book and it had, as Ooh. you have on the wall there, the Life of Agony, LOA. Red, Red Album, and find stuff like that. Yeah. had a huge impact on me. I'm mm. like, whoa, this is different. Did your brothers yeah. listen to stuff like that too? No, not at all. No, no. So I, one of my brothers was into Ozzy. I, I remember that vividly, but that was about it. You know, yeah. they, they, did, they couldn't understand that kind of stuff. That, that wasn't for them. 
So when you're uh, so so okay, so after high school, like, did you make any kind of demos or anything? Or like, constantly, yeah, constantly, yeah. yeah. And you were singing all the whole time too. I would sing. I would write. Uh, <clears throat> I would write demos. I would, I would write vocal parts and give it to whatever band I was in at the time too. Mm. Sometimes the singer, I'd, I'd write the parts for the singer. Sometimes. Dude, I'm so jealous, man. Like I've I've played like growing up, I played drums, bass, and a little bit of guitar, but lyrics, I could never figure out. That's lyrics. my favorite thing to do. Is it? Yeah. So do you have like an idea of like I want this song to be about such and such or? It usually just comes out. You know, I know yeah. what I am. Damn, yeah. I'm I'm so jealous of that, dude. It's it's for whatever project it is with, with the Satan Sisters. It's more or less the subject matter is more often than not based around fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's not that's not like like that with every project I've been yeah. in, but with that band, it's totally. With this band, do you have other guys in the band that write with you? Um, or is it all that's just changing you? now, but for this album, it's all that was all me mainly. Do yeah, you they, like that when other guys have like ideas yeah, and kind of absolutely and, and join yeah. up and stuff? Um, real fast, I heard we were talking earlier. You um, met the uh, Grim Reaper, man. <laughs> so I, I heard an interview you did, and the guy that was interviewing you just skimmed past that. You're like, uh, yeah, Grim, yeah, I got, you know, I'll let you tell the story. And then he went on to a different question. I was like, wait a minute, what happened? So you, you got to tell the story, man. Uh, so what is it, 2020 now? I think it's summer of 2018. I, uh, I got what I thought. Um, well, we were practicing for the Misfits. I remember that. that this is how the story starts. We were doing a Misfits tribute set. And we were practicing for it. And on the way, to, on the way to practice in Athens, which is about what is it, a fifty mile drive from here? Yeah, sixty mile drive, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. I kept thinking I was having a panic attack, and then it, then I was convinced I was having a heart attack, and I got a fever. And anyway, me being a stupid jackass today, I go to practice and practice trying to learn Misfit songs for four hours anyway, while I'm like throwing up and like fainting and stuff like that. I go home and I I can't like. I can't walk up the stairs without falling down, and I, I keep collapsing. And finally, my wife makes me go to the hospital. And they were, you're having a heart attack, you're having a heart attack. Well, long story short, it wasn't a heart attack. I had this weird virus, and it was attacking my heart sac. So this weird flu, they didn't know what it was, was attacking my heart sac. So they hospitalized me, I was there for two or three days. I got out, my fever jacked back up to 105 degrees, and it still affects me to this day, having really? a high fever that long. Yeah. Um, with my speech, I don't know if you notice, sometimes I slur. I'm pretty confident that's that happened with the the fever. Oh yeah, but with the Grim Reaper, like at home, <laughs> get the good stuff, man. This is like this is like, yeah. I mean, I'm August just... of 2018, I think August or September 2018. I know it was 90 something degrees outside, and I, my fever was so high, I was shivering, man. I, I, you know, I was sweating and I was cold, and I went outside and wrapped up in a blanket and closed my eyes. I opened my eyes, and the Grim Reaper was standing over me. Like, how big is he, man, when you see him? <laughs> how big is he? He's my just big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little guy. He's Glenn Denton. No, he, it was, I, I, don't, I don't remember. All I remember is a face, man. And That's crazy. It was man. obviously me hallucinating from having a fever for so yeah. long. You know? Didn't you say, like, they give you, like, morphine and stuff, too, when you're in there? Or oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was cool. Was that cool? Yeah, it was all right. I've never had morphine before, yeah. but it sounds I mean, pretty good. I threw dope. up, and after, but even throwing up, you're like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's cool, man. And so, like, I saw you guys play a couple weeks ago, um, which was rare seeing an actual show now with this pandemic going on. Um, what do you guys, are you doing any kind of like uh, live Facebook live streams? or how you... we, did, we did one, and uh, but I'd rather focus on writing our next record than do anything live at this So, point. you guys are already working on the next one? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's called FAP, F-A-P. What's the same for? I'm not telling. Oh. Yeah, that's up <laughs> right. to you to figure out. That's up to everyone to figure out. Okay. You know, oh, that's I want to cool. be one of those things where it means whatever it means to you. You know. How many songs you got written for it? I have upwards to 20 songs, but I don't know which ones are going to make the cut. When you write songs, do you use a drum machine? Like, how do you get the you, you, all I, acoustic? I, I do it very archaic, man. So yeah. what, what I do is I'll... I'll, uh, I'll uh, Play guitar, and I'll just play into my phone, and when I'll and, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll get the basic track of what I have in mind, then I'll email it to myself, email it back to my phone, and add another layer over that on my voice memo, mm. and that's how I send demos. It's really simple. It's really yeah, it works. You know? I like it, dude. That's cool, man. I don't have any home recording equipment. I don't do any of that. Okay, um, I need you to do like an acoustic show here, man. That'd Let's be that. that'd be cool to have one or two songs here. I'd definitely. Do and we get Nathan to do your next music video. See, the guy that does a show, does videos, man. Yeah. Hey dog. <laughs> so about this record, man. What's uh, what's the single you guys have? It's called Who's Laughing Now. Nice. Oh, where is it? 
Somewhere right right there. there. And then we have another single coming out at some point. Uh, we, have, we filmed a music video for it back in February, but it still hasn't come out yet. Because oh, yeah. Of all the COVID problems uh. with our label. But uh, Nothing to Prove is the next single. Oh, that's cool. So so what's Nothing to Prove about? What's the video concept on that video one? Video concept for Nothing to Prove, it's, uh, it's just us in an old warehouse playing to our fans, man. Yeah. And we had about 30, 40 fans show up and you know beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> Did your record company tell you what songs to put out and all that, or do you choose? We choose. Well, the record company suggested that we do Who's Laughing Now, and I, I went with it. You know yeah and uh but i picked uh nothing to prove oh that's so cool man they're a killer label a lot of a lot of the bands on there you would probably love you know uh, they it, run the gamut from metal to punk to country do they oh that's so cool man all right man you got uh so when you guys play any more shows not this, have anything booked and just focus on the next record until all this mess blows over you know yeah and the only reason we ended up playing that last show is because of was our friend ronnie i wanted to yeah don a5 i got to point do, that i wanted to do that for ronnie oh for yeah yeah sister, sister passed away yeah, that's so sad, man. It's sad. Ronnie's such a good dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was on here. With, we were talking about earlier, Strike First interview. <laughs> got it on my phone, right? Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie was nervous about the interview. And then when he came out, he was like, I was like, you're the funniest guy I've ever interviewed before. Yeah, he's, he's, there's not a bad bone in that dude's body, man. Yeah, he's the best, man. I've known him forever. I'd take a bullet for that guy. How'd you meet, how'd you meet those guys? Or um, Ronnie? I was in a band called Crawl, and they were playing, um, and we were playing Mule Camp. And I was singing for it. It was like a doom metal band, and Die Ninety Five had just formed. I think. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of their first shows, and they they were, they opened up for Crawl, and that's how I met. Oh, that's cool, man. I wonder if I was there. Crawl. How long were you in that band for? Crawl. It's like a few months. Okay, yeah, it's just a simple just, thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to stand up. That's a good band, you know. Yeah. I was more focused on this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, uh, I'm looking forward to your uh, your acoustic album that you said you, you may put out. That I love no, that kind man, of stuff. It's definitely gonna happen. It's gonna be the, this exact album, but acoustic. Oh, really? Yeah. Everything on it just. Same in song, sequence same show, yeah just all oh that's so awesome man that dude well I'm, I'm looking forward to your new album that's coming out i mean that's that's great man i really appreciate being here you got anything else to say or promote man what's up listen to henry and the satan sisters yes watch scott bowling